Welcome back. Welcome back. It's been a long time. Been a long time. Salamte, Graham Raj, and Hatta Poo. Jumbo to all those out there in, 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 in virtual world. Welcome back to Decipher. It's it's uh been a long time coming. We've been working on getting some things in place at the Fresh TV studios. You know, we normally come out of Fresh TV going live to cable vision. We've been building up and getting organized to, to, to bring you something uh, fresh, a fresh look. But in the meantime, uh, the world isn't, isn't stopping. It's, it's going forward. There's a, there's a lot of things progressing, a lot of issues we were covering um, in depth on the breakdown from Fresh TV. So we've branched out and, and developed a, <clears throat> a voice that can capture all of that and, and go into depth in these concepts. And, and you'll see them. I'll unveil them as we go. <clears throat> these different um, topics that we need to, to, to really delve in deep in. The main issue being that we're in the age of misinformation. And in the age of misinformation means you're being flooded with, uh, and, and you're, you're aware of it, this, this is nothing new, everyone's aware of this. It's, it's, you can turn any which way you got mainstream media, which is, is nothing new, that's been around for the last 30, 40 years. Uh, oh, my, uh, my life um, before that, you know, mainstream media feeding you with with a, a, a program. We want to get into that concept of programming and what TV can do and what it's supposed to do for you. We, we need to be clear on these concepts, how programming occurs and how programming happens to us in our minds. Um, every day, every activity, everything we open ourselves up to um, and allowing our space is is permitting an open, direct passage into our mind and programming us. This is happening on a constant basis. And if you're not aware, don't have your, your alarms up, don't have your protections up. It'll take control of your mind slowly but surely. And before you know it, you are living out at someone else's program. Right. So we want to gain control of that. We want to be the directors of the program that we're receiving. We want to be active in this process. Right. Not sitting back passively, allowing all of this to filter into our minds and, and, and control us. Right. So our goal, our main goal through Decipher is to 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 counteract this age of misinformation to provide a safe space for for people of, of our community, of our complexion, of our um, heritage that have gone through what we have gone through, right? Um, definitely not. We're not taking the victim rule because what, what we're returning to, the, the, the giants are returning. We're coming back to our former uh, 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 glory, right? And, and uh, we won't get into too much conspiracy. I'm definitely going to focus on creating logical framework to, to, for the, 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 the contributors and I'll be reaching out to to uh, across the globe to people that I'm um, uh, come into contact with directly in my um, travels and studies. I'm studied around the world. Well, in in I'm studied a lot. <laughs> um, uh, Cuba, uh, through all throughout the states, and so I'm had a good a, a good educational experience. In, the, in that system, but it's allowed me, that experience in Cuba allowed me to reflect on things. And I met, I definitely amplified my circle of, um, of, 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 of people I can, as resources that I can rely on. But right at home, we've got tons of them right here on this rock. 
this 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 uh piece of land that emerged out of the Atlantic Ocean through some process uh, uh, came out of this ocean and allowed for for humanity to to you know what I mean through the passage of time to 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 um, populate it and this current uh, version of humanity on this rock here that is um, can be called Bermuda uh one of my uh, close friends and 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 definite associate in this this experience, Doctor David Living Roots, calls it Cedar Rock, and we 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 will refer to that on and off. I I have a personal reference. I consider it and call it New Atlantis, right? Um, but however you want to call it, because Bermuda that term Bermuda is 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 um it's steeped in 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 the same oppressive. Uh, mentality that that we want to try to counteract through this program. So Decipher is all about bringing in that uh, a group of collective, that collective of conscious individuals cooperating, working together to solve these critical issues that confront us and are preventing us from, from going forward. So we're, go we're going to be tackling them on a steady basis. Um, and then in the background, a lot of the work is going to be done in what's called Telegram. If you're not on it yet, get on Telegram and, and look up Decipher. And you can also go to Decipher.com and take a peep there and click on the links and join some of these conversations. Because the conversation, look, this, this thing here between this, these ears, this uh, neural synaptic uh, network is nourished by conversation, by pushing your, your, the limits and stretching it, it's it's it it doesn't get stronger by sitting there just passively taking in information. So we need this active process. We want to gauge the whole island. We're trying to connect our resources and get uh, uh connect the globe. Sorry, not the, uh, the 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 island is local, and we want the local contributors to be involved heavily. But we're we're spanning out. We're, we're, we're reaching definitely. This is a Pan Africanist movement. I definitely want to make that clear and declare my status as as host of this program, as host of Decipher. I am a Pan Africanist at at my at my core, raised as a Rastafarian uh, uh, heritage, and I look to the east for my solution. I look to the east for answers. Look to the east for how we're going to secure our passage. How to secure our passage back to these? Because that's where the solutions going to kind of going to come from, and that's where our solutions rise from, and that's the only way that we're going to in, in, inevitably um, be able to 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 make this shift. So I've got a, a, a my family member jumping in, uh, also in, in 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 the environment participating. Hopefully, he'll get in because um, this is this is an open space. So um, with that note, I, I'm, I'm I see there in the background there if it's quite ready. We've got uh, a main contributor here, Dr. David Living Roots. Welcome to the cipher. Can't hear you yet. Can't hear you yet. Your audio. Let's do a little audio test as we work that out. Still not hearing your audio. I'm not hearing your audio. I see your mic's open. Your mic is open. But I'm not hearing your audio. Test your audio. Okay, he's going out and come back in. On that note, on that note, I'm going to rinse out the, the, the theme song of today as we move into this space. I'm, I'm going to rinse a tune that is 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 going to to give us the, as, as Dr. Roots gets us, we sort out his audio. I'm going to run big tune here. Bonnie Wheel, arise and shine. Thank you. 
We've been down in a poverty. Yeah, let's see how this. Let's catch a vibe. Let's catch a vibe. We've been down in captivity much too long. We've been down in humility and oh so long. Rise and shine. And win your liberation. Oh, now is the time when all nations must be free. So rise and shine. Restore your strength and power. Waste no more time. Remember your history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rise and shine, rise and shine. Rise and shine, rise and shine, rise and shine. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that theme as we go. That's definitely the theme of today as we as we move into spring. And we're, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna give some reference to the to the energies. Oh, oh, oh we have got another heavy hitter in the in the in the background here. I don't know if it's gonna contribute. If it's ready to to jump in. Big brother G Money in the in the in the space here. Let's see if he's coming. Oh, okay. See if he wants to contribute and get in on the conversation. But let's go. Let's let's get into this. I'm waiting on <clears throat> Dr. Living Roots to come back into the space. So we're talking about the different issues that face us as humanity, that face us as a community, people that look like us, and but people that have suffered like us. They need a voice they can trust, they need a space they can trust, they can come to and trust the information that they're being flooded with because we're being it, it, we're in the age of misinformation and we need a counteraction and that's what um, decipher is all about bringing us together so that we can gather the minds and solve these puzzles that are holding us back that are holding us up that are keeping us from going forward yeah so in that in that light let's go a little bit into what the equinox is the vernal equinox is let's let's take a look at some of the what what that process is as we move into spring and what that means people people uh use the term often right but do they you know it's springtime but what does that mean what does springtime mean excuse me why even have the term spring why do we refer to, refer to it as spring right and why are the four seasons what, 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 how how do four seasons happen? What's the processes beyond behind making seasons happen? And what are the factors that cause it? And why is it different in different regions? Why do you have in the in the north you have summer and um, winter opposite to in the south? Why does that happen? People may take it for granted and 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 assume that they understand the processes of of this uh, what happens on this 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 earth that we live on but how do these processes how have we over the millennia been able to decipher because we're, we're definitely not the first we're, we we are we are uh, walking on the the or walking behind the footsteps of our ancestors we we stand on the shoulders of our ancestors and we constantly give uh, recognition to them you can see in the background i'm changing my my green screen up and come back <laughs> the new with 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 the heritage, you can see the the the, the 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 heritage that's behind me, and we're reaching back further. We're going back generations and generations, generations before we can even consciously be able to call out any names and and make a specific claim to a specific heritage. We're pointing east. We're pointing east to the origin of humanity. Where does humanity come from in general? Where where has and that that's even disputed. And, um. So we don't want our soldiers to be distracted by so much information out there that they, they can't even make that that um, connection with confidence. And that's what's missing. We're, we're, we're lacking that information that will strategically allow us to build a movement to look forward and, um, you know, make that, that, that 
uh, sojourn that that Marcus Garvey spoke of, right? I was raised in that heritage. I mean, and my brother, I don't know if it's ready to if you if you're trying to come on the screen, I see you there. If you give me a signal. <laughs> okay, okay. So <clears throat> the, the 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 purpose of this is is getting clear and making that the, the movement we need to make short term and long term, right? How do we we perceive where we're going, we need to nav we need some form of navigation. And we have always been navigators from time immemorial, uh, as far back as we can see. Uh, humanity, which originated <laughs> in the cradle of civilization, which is where I'm, I'm feeling a specific uh, gravitational pull towards. <laughs> I'm being pulled back. To, to directly to the motherland, specifically to the cradle of civilization. And we'll get into that more heavy. But that is that is even being disputed. And on that note, let's see if we can pull in the, 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 the great Dr. David Living Roots. Let's see if it's, we get his audio right. Okay. Oh, still can't hear you. And you got the headset on. Is it on my side? Must be on my side. Why I'm not getting your? Why I'm not hearing your audio? Let me see if I can fix a few things in here. I don't know if if they can hear you out there. I'm gonna run that. Let's 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 run some more rise and shine. In the meantime, while I work on this audio in the background on my on my side. Let's rinse out some more of that. Bonnie Whaler. Bonnie Whaler, big 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 artist. From long time, big artist, long time, long time. Bonnie Wheeler, that that is consciousness, and that's another piece of this. We're gonna hit you with, we're gonna hit you with that level of consciousness. <laughs> we're gonna hit you with that level of consciousness. Bring you with that level of consciousness to get you to rise back up and see the light. Rise and shine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still having some 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 audio issues. I'm check my my audio setup. I can't let let's see. Let, let's try bringing me in another. Let's bring in another version. Can you hear me? I hear that. I hear that. That's coming through. So let's pull the other one out. Where's the other one? All right. I got your audio there. If you could turn. Um. Um. Uh, yeah. There we go. Turn my other camera. Off. Beat the studio. I already wow. pulled it off the screen. You can leave it there if you want to. It doesn't. It yeah, doesn't. Matter. But fine. you can turn if you can turn your, your um screen. The the mobile. Well, this is good. Yeah, that works. That works. And we got your full screen. Yes, yes. Welcome to the cipher. The 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 um knowledgeable one started. Wow, well started. 
uh, achieved his PhD several years ago in um, su sustainability, sustainable studies, um, but a definite um, student of liberty, student of Rastafari, student of uh, nature, connected to nature. Definitely, in, in, in terms of my circle, one of the ones that that keeps my um, balance right and 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 making sure we've got a perspective from nature and we don't get too caught up in technology because we need that balance. I think technology is a tool and we should not be fearful of it as um, those that are going to lead the movement back east, right? We should not be fearful of technology and we should use it to our own. I'm lost you, I'm lost you again. You, you hit something and, and you went off the screen. But as I give a bit of more of an introduction to, to Dr. Living Roots, um, he has spent a life um, being the, the, the one of the um, principal um, movers towards uh, and, and giving that emphasis on nature in, 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 in my crew in, in, in those that um, from uh, Barclay ideas that went away to school we got others definitely but you pull that that resource of connecting to nature strongly in all of your studies. Can you can you speak on that a bit and and, and what it means to you? You're having an active morning. Yeah, yeah, I got a lot going on. It's, it, we're starting it off, and we're getting we we could definitely work out some kinks. We you know the kinks yeah. are coming. You know the kinks are coming, but we gotta work them out. So yes. yeah, talk. Um, talk the role of nature in, in, in your studies and how you, you merge your PhD and your, and, and, and your studies? Well, first I want to, give me a second. I just want to move my, my, my mobile because I don't like looking down on it. So I'm just going to put something okay. in front of me. Just okay, a second. Okay. Um, I'm going to try something. My my studio, my whole studio vibe is messed up now. I had a nice little setup, but that's all right. Hopefully it doesn't drop down at some point. That's a bit better. Okay. Okay. Uh, I see. Even with this, I'm looking at the camera sideways. And so let me move the camera over. Yeah. yeah we, all we, right. We work these kicks out. All right. So talk to us. Talk to us about give us, that give us introduction. Yeah, it looks presentable. Does that look good? Is that, oh, yeah. can you see? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, it looks clear, it looks presentable. Yeah, well, greetings, first of all, to to uh, the millions and millions and millions of viewers out there that, that are watching, or just the one, or just us, <laughs> you know. Um, Might be just us to start, but we're getting started. That's all right. And my my initial, my initial intro, I had started with this in front of me. Bermudians call it the flopper. Uh, throughout the islands, they call it the leaf of life. It has a scientific name, which I'm not going to try to pronounce right now. Bryophyllum, something, so on or so on. It's actually a native to Madagascar. Like a lot of our plants here, come from different parts of the world, including Africa. But this is something that Bermuda, Bermuda, people in Bermuda need to use more of, is a curative that's right in our back garden. And it's one of the most curative healing uh, plants in nature around. Okay. Do your own research, definitely. Do your own research. So in other words, this is to to make that connection, as you said, about, about nature and the role that it, it plays, the role that it can play, the connection, because that's where we came from. I don't want to start off too deep because you're going into a deep, very deep question, you know? Um, yeah, and no, I don't fire. want to start to rumble. Fire, fire, no, fire. Show that connection, show the, 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 the because that's what this is about. We, we want to establish connections and show how we can navigate this space that we're living in now, but point east. Make sure we're always pointing east and that we always had these roots and that you're just tapping into that, that what's within you, right? It, it, it's 
the, the nature that was within you, the, the heritage that was instilled in you. Cause you weren't, you didn't just say, Hey, I'm going to go out to the, to, 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 um, Thomas jungle or the laboratory as you call it. And, and starts, you know, uh, uh, looking for, for, for your connection to nature. It was ingrained in you. It was something that was, was, um, nurtured in you, right? It connected you to your ancestors in a way. I would, I would, I would suppose, and I, I know a bit of your background, so I'm, I'm pre- taking some jumps there, but that you have a, a, a solid foundation that you also, um, connect to and, and, uh, you know, standing on the shoulders of great ones that came before you in your ancestral line. Well, um, as you said, it's all about connection because I'm thinking many different things that if you went east, eventually you'll come around to what we call west. So really, it's a global trod, as we say within the Rasta community. It's a global journey. If you go east and you kept going, you would eventually arrive right back at the same spot. So within all aspects of the globe, you will find people who uh, connect to nature and they have various different names, no matter if they're up north, down south, east um, or west. So for me, it's all about solutions. That's what it was for me. It was about uh, a magnetic draw Meaning, where did, where, where did it feel like to be home? And did it feel like home when you were in a building, in town, surrounded by cubicles and, and, and people? Or did it feel home when you were out in the forest or by the sea or for Bermuda on the sea? Or under the sea. Or under the sea. Or under, okay. Okay. Or under the sea. Within, yeah, within you... the... Hmm? Oh, keep going, keep going, sorry. Within the social life of other community-based life forms like bees, termites, ants... Let's take bees, for example, because they all operate on these similar things and we're no different. We're, we're no different. The bees, you have those that labor within the hive and then you have those that go out and fly amongst the flowers. And, 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 and they, the ones that fly amongst the flowers, they use ultraviolet vision to identify the flowers and different from their green vegetation. So in other mm-hmm. words, the vision that they see on the outside is, is different. Um, so I guess some of us are the worker bees on the inside, and some of us are the ones flying on the outside, smelling the flowers, taking the nectar up, providing bee pollen to take back to, to the hive. And then, of course, you have the mother, the queen, who is who is in there, who is giving rise to the males, you know, and the females, the drones and the, the workers. So you ask, you ask me, where did the connection come from? I don't know. I just know it was always there as a child that I wanted to be outside in the bush rather than inside and the only times I did like being inside was when I was reading because that allowed me to escape to to other worlds um, from from the outside and it's I'll finish with that it's on that journey that you start to encounter the fellow life forms around you and you really start to connect it's only on that journey as I told someone the other day this person had gone swimming. They do, you know, morning swims. Bermuda, we have this tradition of people going for these morning swims. And they mm-hmm. said how, you know, they noticed all of the Portuguese man of war in this place and they'd never seen them before over there. And, you know, so on and so on. And they said how last year they saw a turtle and they swam with the turtle and the turtle was taking them 
taking them out and they had to stop following it because the turtle was taking them too far. And I, and I, and then they also finally they said, oh, and we saw, oh, I wasn't there, but my friend said there was a spotted eagle ray and I missed it, I missed it. And I showed all my video where I had filmed a spotted eagle ray. And the point is, is that in order to see, you have to be there. Okay. So it's only, it's only by going out into nature that you encounter those things that are there. If not, you will never know they're there. This is it. So, okay, that's that's and that's there's so one. much there for our healing. Can I add one more thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're in, you're in. Yeah. The fact is, is that I was sitting down on Coney Island yesterday. We had some good weather, sitting on the rocks. I took my my uh, book and because you know it's been a long journey. So um, this this strong this week, I've had opportunity now to kind of just relax a bit. And I was sitting out there and I was looking out. And of course, I was the only one on the rocks. It was around. So it's around 11 o'clock or something. I was the only one, sun beaming, very relaxed. And I said, there's a lot of people in Bermuda, but I'm the only one on these rocks. When you look to the west and to the east, I'm the only person on these rocks. Okay. That means that if I went, if I went to Hamilton, though, and I went into that bank, or if I ran onto the, you know, um, the bus terminal or wherever, it's going to be a lot of people in those places. <laughs> okay. Now, the feeling that I was having on those rocks comes from the environment connected to my mind. So that means, and the feeling that we get when we go to the bank and the press is saying, you know, sanitize your hands, get in the line wait in this line, the whatever, whatever, or you're at work, you're working as a teller, those feelings are totally different. But the majority of people are in those places in the hive rather than on the outside of the hive. And we have to recognize the impact that it has on us, on all of us, including myself. Okay, okay. So that connection... You felt you was inspired. There was that moment that inspired you. You felt that connection and it moved through you. And you you recognized that the only way to 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 um to be able to have moments like that is to be outer, be outer in nature. So you you, you pursued that. Is, is the, I'm getting the gist of it. Yeah. Well, it's a magnetic attraction. There's also a desire. So desire is there, but the desire comes from the attraction. As my good friend Ja Pilot will say, he said that uh, that movement follows the thought, the energy. It's not the, it's not the vice versa. So the attraction comes from, the desire comes from the magnetic attraction. You see what I mean? Yes, and yes. The, I don't know. I, I personally think that... Um, we all have different connections. You said, for example, you told me once that you're very connected to the water. I mean, look where you grew up. I'm not sure if you were born and raised from young in that spot, but if you did, that that water would have connected to you as from very young. Yeah, yeah, it is definitely. I could, uh, my my family are fishermen. I was my 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 mother, my mother's side of the family. We actually it's, it's called Fisherman's Hill. And so a, 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 a great pro proportion of my close ancestors were, were heavy fishermen and depended on fisheries. So it's in my blood to be out there on the ocean. I've, I've never um, been uncomfortable in the ocean. People get seasickness, all these type of things. Traveling in general. I, more than just connected to the ocean, I'm connected to traveling. I'm, I, I, I have to see the globe. And I'm particularly feeling... Um, uh, like my uh, yeah yeah because I had in a whole year I haven't left this island and that to mm. me that that's just been a, a serious sacrifice to make that and and that's the root of this 
this um, version of the bird. I'm had I'm had a long bird before, but since this um, whole COVID process, I'm decided I'm not uh, trimming. I'm left the traditional um, work environment, so I'm working at home, so I can let it go again, like I did in college. This is I, I was just really just looking at some some past pictures, but. The route is in traveling more so. So ocean, I'm, I have no fear of traveling on the ocean for long, you know, staying overnight long. I haven't made a, 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 a cross, a trip across the Atlantic going as far to, as, as, as North Rock and, um, you know what I mean? Out to the, 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 the banks, um, several times with, 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 uh, parts of the family when I was younger, when I was younger, used to go fishing on a regular basis. So my connection to, to the ocean is all a part of this part um, piece of traveling, of being a traveler. So I consider myself a, a, a world traveler. I, I love languages. I love cultures. I love, uh, there's an attachment there to, to understanding people and their different perspectives. And that's what the cipher is about, bringing these different perspectives together. I know through, through, through my stuff. Uh -huh. yeah. When you were younger, Meaning from when you, you know, your early days be, be, before five, were you raised right there in that house in the hill and so on? So I, up until 10, I, I was raised at Cottage Hill or nine. So my 10th birthday was here. So we moved. This is the homestead, the Gibbons homestead. My father's um, family line um, all lived here. In that process of, of getting, making that transition, um, we we well, when he first got married and 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 whatnot, we we were um, in Cottage Hill and then moved there when I was nine. So, but Cottage Hill is not far either. I didn't have a direct. Which way were you outside. facing on Cottage Hill? So I'm, facing I'm, north my house south. facing north. So I was yeah, not 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 facing Harrington Sound, um, but facing north. Um, but that's actually the first house. As soon as you get on top of the hill, Cottage Hill. And you reach the crossroads. My house was there, which is also an interesting piece in in being on the crossroads and the symbolism that crossroads. But my house was right at the crossroads there, where you can go out um, to the back and go out um, and connect to to Abbott's Cliff, or you can um, well both of them end at Abbott's Cliff. But you know what I mean? They split and then meet back up out behind the Hudson's out there. But yeah, so yeah. I, I I grew up. And, and then, and I was directly, so I spent a lot of time in Harrington Sound also. So Harrington Sound, North Shore, that those were the, 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 the bodies of water that, that, that directly appealed to me, that, that called me. I, I spent a lot of my time, um, you know, fishing um, off the rocks and, and doing um, activities that, that were, 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 you know, but you know how we did it back in the day. We was running around chasing lizards and you know catching lizards and and and, and um poking with beehives mr frabbit's beehives <laughs> i don't right. know if you, you <laughs> mr Fra um randolph mr frabbit the, the bee man yeah, yeah i know the, the bee man of course <laughs> he, he lived right next door to me and um you yeah. know so I, with, so I had a bee uh you know bee farm right there and used to poke there and 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 um Give him a headache. That that was our main mm -hmm. our, our main <laughs> objective in life was to be a headache yeah. in the neighborhood growing up in Cottage Hill. Right. And I did a pretty good job of that. I did a pretty good job, I have to admit. <laughs> but um, you that means you would have you would have grown up because uh in 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 my research and I talk about it in my book. Um uh, what's I'm trying to remember the the, the newest book. Um don't block his brilliance, or don't block his brilliance. Handbook of top ten principles to to empowering the brilliance of boys of African descent. But I yeah. talk about that, and this is just well known research that it's before the age of five, but really before the age of three, that the images that will frame our life are ingrained in our in our psyche and our consciousness. Okay. So you would have been growing up, yes, with Cottage Hill and so on, but with that blue expense, expense of, of ocean in front of you as you drove off the hill every day or walk off the hill every day or went to school or did you go to Francis Patton? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. France Patton who did who seven years, seven years of that, you know, in them days. Yeah. You know, doing PE on the field, seeing the ocean and the and the doing it in the sun, doing it in the in the rain, you know, seeing the ocean in various different ways. That was a, a strong, strong your, your your physical body would have actually made connections that you can't actually do without now. You know, surely, surely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm called to anybody. And all of that. I, yeah, wherever I go, I need to be close to the ocean. So I'm going since, um, you know, I started in, in, in Boston and um, DC and Massachusetts and did a lot of studying in the States. That wasn't too close to the ocean. So that, that might have been part of the, 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 some of the issues I had there. But then I went to Cuba, started in Cuba, ocean. Um, was pretty close, uh, you know, our drive. Um, and we would spend weekends down in the ocean uh, there in Cuba. And then I'm, I'm traveled a bit throughout the, the, the Caribbean since then. But I'm pulled right now to, to East Africa. And, and it, there's this, I, I feel the ocean literally calling me. I close my eyes and I feel this process happening. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Madagascar. This is Madagascar. from Madagascar. Okay, okay. That that the, it, it originates from Madagascar. Okay, and was bored her. And was bored well, I'm sure I'm sure was bored her over over time, but it's fine. But without throughout the Caribbean and okay. and everywhere in the Caribbean has different names for it, you know, and everyone likes to argue and think that that name is the is the right name, and you know, um but yeah, so it, it, somehow it's it's ended up as an ornamental because obviously the British and the French, they love their gardens. So it could have been possibly from the French in particular, bringing it as an ornamental of some sort in, in, in their gardens, or might've been bought over by in other methods also through cargo or who knows, but that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's where it's from. You know? Okay, that's, that's where, where it predominates, where, where, where it's um, endemic. So- yeah. All right. Yeah. So now that's the end in our background. But God, people have got an idea, although we don't have many connected because unfortunately this is not going out to Fresh TV's Facebook page. So we're not going to have an interaction, that online interaction today. So this is kind of like right. we're just recording some intros, recording some footage, but it's going out to cable. Um, so pe pe people are hopefully tuned in. And um, so to get an idea of who we are and, um, and, and what we intend to do, um, this so Decipher's intended to be panel oriented i'm the host but I, I more of a conductor more of a a, a a moderator and bring the 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 intellectuals whether through university or through self-study and i definitely want to promote and rate self-study because in this day and age we don't need to rely on certainly not on western education and, and mainstream media for our information and for our knowledge foundation we need to be um as the issue the question you asked yesterday will i be presenting um my own research we need to be our own researchers and understand what research is um so research can be primary um this is this is not specifically obviously not for you but for <laughs> for the viewers research can be primary where i'm conducting the experiments and collecting data myself but it can also be um, secondary and tertiary. Um, so secondary, you're commenting on directly on a journal um, article or some some research, some material that you have got access to, and you are uh, referring to that research. And tertiary can be when you're referring to studies, what is called metacognition or meta studies. And that's what I, I want to key in on on this channel is the two, primary and meta studies. I'm not going to do a whole lot of um, presenting journal articles here. What we're going to try to do is boil it down and get the, 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 um, the meta information out of it. What are the further implications of this here on Decipher? That primary research, that there's heavy discussions on primary topics we're going to do in in the background in telegram um that's where people can get involved they can present any information that they've got access to and then we'll boil it down and 
come to a, 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 a palatable version to present here. Um, so this, this is a lot more along the lines of meta studies, meta cognition, where we'll be looking at other people looking at studies, right? Looking at how um, uh, uh, social media and um, mainstream media are, are flooding us with this information. And, and why we can have what I have termed, and I'm not the first one to say it, definitely, that we are living in the age, not the age of information, but the age of misinformation, that 99% of what you're hearing is distorted, it's, it's twisted to someone else's benefit, and we need to reorient that and navigate these seas of information and get this information properly oriented with a logical framework. That, that's another key piece here. We're going to use logic. And, and the structure of, of making logical arguments, setting your, your premise, and then <clears throat> supporting statements to your premise. And then we'll go about debunking other supporting statements so that we can see the validity of our premises, right? Um, yeah. And, and, and um, even theories that are, are standing, long standing, uh, are, they're not safe in, in, in the cipher, right? They're not safe on the cipher because there are a lot of long-standing theories that have been to our detriment, that don't serve us as, as our people, that were a result of poor science or faulty science or science that had an objective that was miscued and meant to serve another group's purpose, not ours, not people that look like us, not people that had our experience, right? So we need to have a resource so that we can reprogram ourselves, repro reprogram our community, our young people and our seniors. That's another focus here, um, is bringing that, those two segments of our population closer together. The, the, the elders, grandparent age, 50 plus, 60 plus, those grandparents, bring them together with the, the, the younger generation, get them sitting together. That's why we're delivering this right to your homes. All you got to do is turn on the TV and be tuned in and we can connect those components of the family, the other one's going to be out working. Nine o'clock, you know, most most people are out working with, that are not um, working from home. And they're going to be busy during these times. You know, they're busy being the ones that are producing for our um, uh, society, right? But we can focus in on those two groups, the seniors that have a wealth of knowledge through experience and the youth that have the creativity, innovation, and vision, Right? But just uh, you know, uh, 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 traditionally fed by Western education in our education system, which we know has a particular skew to it, and and um, technology now, right? They're getting they're getting their hands on technology at an early age, um, earlier and earlier. Um, you know, you can see two year olds, three year olds holding a tablet. Um, you what's your view on that specifically how early should should technology reach our young people and what do you how do you view technology my personal view is that it's a tool how do you view it keep it out of the hands as long as possible okay keep keep uh <clears throat> boredom is the access the gener what's the word? The, the, the generator to genius. That's where border, that's where genius comes from. That's where creativity comes from. It comes from boredom. What we call genius and creativity is not regurg regurgitation. So when you have access to too much information, you just regurgitate what you've already seen or heard from other people. That means it's not original. And you won't have the ability to tune into what is originally from you. Like you said, <clears throat> there's many, many studies that talk about cognition, specifically the three key factors for me in terms of development, which are literacy, numeracy, and uh, ABC, agility, balance, and coordination, and otherwise physical. And technology is going to add, uh, act as a, as a depressant to all three of those things if it's introduced too early. <clears throat> yeah, if it's introduced too early, it will act as a depressant. So I'm not saying it doesn't have a role. I'm not saying, but, you know, this is if my wife was here, she would know that 
that you know there's there's always that war um on if if i had my way the children wouldn't have any tablets or any any devices or anything like that they would just have books and outdoors and toys what we call toys uh which are really uh, uh vehicles for exploration and for the imagination because the tablets and all that do that for you and i'll just say this i know you are a very big proponent of technology and it is very important but it's very simple and they're not gonna they're not gonna be left out <laughs> i mean as you can see a baby as you said now can pick up a tablet and use it interface with it okay? that shows you how easy it is to for that that our brains are, are so our, our bodies are so uh, uh such a highly functioning computer that that's that's simple they're not going to you know um be left behind if we hold off okay and the elders you want to jump in the elders the elders want someone to listen to them the young people want the reverse the young people want to be listened to like they want to have an impact right so for the young people they need to get those experiences first because if not they ain't really gonna have nothing to say you know anyway that's yeah, that's yeah. My, my my take on it all right so let, let me give you let me pose a couple questions to you do you view um pen and paper as the uh, as technology yes right because yes. it, it... and i got uh, on my on my uh channel david roots tv i talk about some of the most pr primordial technologies that are actually esoteric that's a whole nother conversation including i don't talk about pen and paper because pen and paper is actually quite advanced yeah but i yeah. talk about you know i talk about things like um the door or the path you know so these things are technology in their primordial sense so yes they are tools yeah exactly um, now, that, so there is a definite case um, for for overstimulation. I definitely, um, you know, uh, life happens at a certain frame rate. Um, if you didn't, if you weren't aware that what frame rate means is our our ability to perceive reality, um, it's it's very closely connected to concepts within technology that we 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 become familiar with through our. Um, exploration of technology and that's one I, I key in on which is is um, uh, frames per second or frame rate and you can get your own tap into this when you look at things that move in a circular motion really fast like a fan right uh, if, if you lay on your bed and sit and look at a, a fan spinning you you can at moments pick up if you blink your eyes or squint or whatnot you can kind of isolate a frame and catch it in it in a almost in a static you know static motion to it and that we are kind of receiving reality as these frames that seem continuous to us um because of our perception of real that's how we perceive reality as continuous as flowy right but we also have this conflict that we receive reality in specific frames. It, 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 and we get that by, by our pursuit of technology. So I bring that up in the sense that in our um, exploration of reality, we, we, we have developed technology. Humanity has developed technology over time. And technology can serve as um, to assist us to explore further or it can be a hindrance. And we have to be as aware as possible when technology is hindering exploration and becoming a crutch or like, like um, um, eyeglasses. 
eyeglasses can allow you, they allow you to, to see something that you can't at that moment, but they actually make your eyes weaker and weaker and weaker. So the more you use glasses, the more you're going to need to use glasses and the more you need to increase your, your, um, your, your, the strength of your, your prescription. Right. I'm sure the ophthalmologists out there are, 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 are cringing right now because they'll <laughs> tell you something different. <laughs> well, they'll uh, say your eyes are going to get weaker anyway. Your muscles are, on your lenses are going to get weaker anyway. But so so okay. So that, that I, I I was going to introduce that as a so you got the two pieces of information that are really difficult to isolate. Let let's use this but as don't a segue. Get stuck there. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Let, let's use that as a segue into into um. What some of the concepts with or topics we're dealing with right now, particularly the the immune system, right? So the branch, the overall branch I want to tackle this from is our immune system and come from that framework, um, which can be viewed as technology also. Um, to to, and if we view it as technology, biotechnology that our bodies organically created, right? That as we study it and, and, and put it under a microscope, we see that there's these process, specific processes that are happening. You need some pretty strong microscopes, lateral micrographs and things. But um, the point being is that we see that there are uh, uh, proteins and um, peptides, which are the precursors to proteins, doing all of these specific functions and have these roles, right? Specifically within the immune system, you have these organic molecules um, that that coalesce and can't have a life of their own um, macrophages, and these cells, right, um, that are, are programmed to. Well, let's not use the word programmed because macrophages are technically not um, uh, programmed. That is cells in our immune system that are the 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 our early layer of defense that go out and attack anything that looks different that has any type of a um uh in the inflammatory response triggered by um other um uh molecules they come in and they attack from the beginning so you can view all of this as technology also and what uh science has done the issue science has and what we need to do what we need to be the ones that consume it the the health um benefits and uh uh, uh, we're well, the ones that suffer the consequences of when it goes wrong, right? Because um, we, 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 you know, it's a, it, health uh, systems are applied on us in in a way. Uh, and the, the way we live now, you go to your doctor, and your doctor tells you what's best. We're not our own physicians anymore, as 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 in in ancient Kemet, the situation was as spoken of by outsiders that came in that everyone's a physician here, right? Um, you have uh, maybe uh, um, a certain hierarchy, but everybody was a physician. You could stop to anybody and, and they could describe to you what you need for that ailment, right? At any, t any time. That was the predominant feeling people had when they, they, they um, outsiders, wrote about their experience in Kemet. That was a very predominant feature, that everyone's a physician, everyone's a scientist. And we've lost that approach. Right now, we 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 create this idea of experts, right? And they they function in their world. They are bound by their rules, right? They, we we can't tell them what to do because that's that they're experts. We can't give them any feedback and say, "Look, you're going you're going too far." And that we've lost that contact. We've lost that autonomy over our health. And we've given it over to, to, to other people. So that what they're doing and what I'm found is in science, they are embarked on this mission to, to be better than nature. And that's where I feel we have gone wrong. Um, we can study it, reflect and observe how it works and try to, to mimic it or work in harmony with it. Um, I wouldn't even use the word mimic it. Work in harmony with it. Develop systems that support the natural organic processes that are already happening. But Western science is, is lost that. They've become their own uh, their own policemen. No one's really policing them and because um, and, and, and we'll delve deep into that component. Who are the ones fact-checking the fact-checkers? 
that's the theme we, we will address here. And that's what we will attempt, the real we'll attempt to serve um, here in Decipher, with the, the coming together of the minds, the gathering of the minds, to be a resource so that we can uh, put a check on some of this information that's being thrown around at us, flooded at us, no, not thrown around, literally flooding us with information. And, you know, with these, um, uh, 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 what do you call them? Um, they get this, the, the information has this, this certain um, prestige about it because it comes from the source. And, oh, you can't question this person or this authority. Yes, authority, right? It has this authority about it. You, you see it on CNN or, 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 or you looked it up on WebMD, you know, and it has this certain authority about it. And you feel like I, I, I shouldn't question them because they have all the resources. But if we go in deeper and we look deeper, there's a, a, a linkage there that I want to uncover that there's a certain benefit for them not for you not checking them. They can go on and develop things in a space and uh, you know produce something that at the end can have um, tremendously detrimental effects on us. But it's so sophisticated, you don't have an opportunity to question it. So that, that's, a, that's a layered um, premise I'm putting out there, very layered, and we're going to take off layers as we go. But the concept is, is that we're allowing science to go too far, they're developing too much sophistication without the checks and balances in place, right? We're not keeping up with them. And unencumbered, they can cause tremendous, tremendous harm. Tremendous, tremendous harm. Just as 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 well as miraculous technologies can be developed, they can also develop um, technologies can be seriously, I mean, beyond the imagination, um, harmful. Um, so not to be the doomsday, I don't want to bring this doomsday talk about, but we have the potential here with this scenario that we are currently in. We've departed so far from the the natural cues that we normally have we've departed so far far from that we've given up our role in being um active in our health process that it, it, we face a serious dilemma a serious serious dilemma um that i don't think is readily uh resolved there's no ready um uh solution that we can just implement in a moment right and just say oh, let's switch back to how we used to be it's going to take time to, 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 for us to, to become confident in our capacity, our individual capacities and our collective capacity, which, um, which we're, we're going we're gonna to take advantage of here. So I'm, I'm rambled a bit, but I hope I was able to, to paint that image and connect and make that, that transition from um, that, wow. that we've seen so far. Yep. I was thinking as you were um, rambling, which is not, which is fine. Rambling means flow. You're thinking out loud. It's the flow. You see there, but facilitating flow. This is what we want. I, we want to promote a yeah. space where people can get into flow. But go. Yeah. I was thinking that one of the best things about technology is the ability it has, it allows people to connect. So in our world, if we look back over time and we look at technology, the ability for people to connect has been some of the more altruistic benefits of technology, whether it's TV, whether it's radio, internet, or even, you know, as you said, things like hearing aids, you know, a computer which allows someone who um, 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 to, to, to speak. Um, what's his name, the brilliant mathematician? That was a uh, uh, what's his name? Um, was in the wheelchair, yeah. passed away recently. Hmm? A, a physicist, um, yeah, what's his name again? Stephen. Uh, Stephen. Not, not Stephen King, Stephen King did the it's similar, no, no, yeah, but um, so it allowed him to, to communicate, and um, so in other words, connection. I think one of the negative things is that, um, Technology makes you think that you need it. That's yeah. that's the that's the other end of the, the spectrum. So 
and I'm someone who, who, who likes technology, of course, um, but, you know, it will, you want to go out, you want to be fit. You want to go out and be healthy. So instead of trusting your own awareness of yourself, you say, let me go buy a Fitbit, you know, and I've been through multiple of these little devices and, and none of them really give you what you really want. So you're continuing to like, you know, to, to try to find the, the ultimate one. And, um, and then you realize, okay, for it to really work, you need to wear it 24 seven all the time, you know? So the mobile phone is the other thing, you know, we need to be, I went out running this morning and I said, cause I was waiting to hear from you. I said, let me take my phone with me. I didn't want to take it, but I said, let me take it with me. And I have my headphones because I was going to listen to some music while I was running. And I said, no, I just want to hear and connect with when I'm running. And uh, But I still have to take the phone because I'm like, well, maybe maybe the brother, the alchemist might call me. So this, this, this technology has this way of uh, making you feel that you need it. And it actually creates a disconnection trying to show you the, the two sides. One, the best mm -hmm. thing about it is it allows you to connect. On the flip side, with that connection, it actually creates more of a disconnection, not only to others. You're walking through town, you're always on your phone, da, 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 you know, but to yourself also because it tunes you out from, as you said, you're feeling ill or there's something going on, WebMD, and instead of tuning into yourself and really observing it, you start to go outside for the answers. And it's something that we all um, have to, 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 to monitor because it's so pervasive um, in our society. So, and really I was listening to uh, uh, a lecture. I mean, this, this, is, this is the <clears throat> dichotomy here. I was listening to a lecture on the internet where the uh, Buddhist monk was talking about how we use technology as a crutch amongst many other things to combat our loneliness. So in other words, I'm saying it's, it's, it's like a paradox of learning about the role of technology to separate yourself, but I'm using technology to learn about it. You know. <laughs> That's, that's life, you know. That's life. So ultimately, life. ultimately, we don't like being by ourselves. This is what the brother was saying. It makes us feel feel lonely, okay. And so we we any of these things, whether it's all the technology pieces you said, whether it's digital technology or a book, you know, or whatever, help us to escape that. When he said that, really, we need to acknowledge that and and uh be comfortable in that because that's where you're really going to connect to yourself which is yeah. very challenging now yeah. my last thing up on the technology somehow we've gotten to this topic is that um the one of the challenges of because technology is a huge you know vast thing but generally when people talk about technology they're talking about computers and mobile phones and stuff. They're not talking about microscopes. They're not talking about, you know, distillation apparatus and wires or whatever. Um, but if we stick on just the idea of the mobile phone and the computer, one of the big problems is the five senses. So technology always tries to discount one of those senses. So in other words, you know, with my children, one of the things that really gets to me with children in general is when they're holding a mobile, your body's designed in a certain way. Your body's designed for your head to be up, to look down from time to time. But if you held your head down all the time, you're gonna get stress here because your body's not designed to keep your head down like that. And it's not designed to keep your head up like that. It's designed for your head to be like that out of balance. So when we have these mobile phones and stuff, is already creating an imbalance, okay? When we have the headphones, as we know, 
they'll tell you that it's going to harm your hearing in the long run because your body is not designed to have sound plugged right in like that. Even if you had the mobile phone in front of you like this, your eyes are not designed, as you said, to deal with this type and color of light. It's not good on the eyes. And we all know about that. Um, as far as touch, I guess, maybe we're getting away with it there, you know, in regards to touching and so on. But not even that, because we have the microwave radiation, you know, and, the, and that the fact that the phone shouldn't be that close. So no matter what senses we're talking about, the over-reliance and, and, and excessive consumption of it will be harmful in the long run. Um, and it will disconnect you from yourself much different than this, you know? Yes. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I have to say. Exactly. Exactly. Um, there is, there is a, a, a role that we're supposed to play being in between divinity and the earth. As humanity was some was supposed to moderate this space somewhat, and we have so, some autonomy, some control over nature, right? And that's where where the, it's it's the it's also the poison. It's powerful, but it's also a poison because having that choice and that will to choose, right? We can go out, we can we can work with nature, or we can choose to do to work against it. And unfortunately, yeah, even this. This very healing plant, um, I'm not going to use it for an extended period. I'm going to do five days where I'm used chewing the leaf or making the tea. In this case, I'm, I'm, I'm juicing one leaf, small leaf a day. I'm adding it to my green juice. And after that, I'm going to stop because it's not meant as a food, you know. So the right. excessive consumption, once I take this out of its natural habitat and I pick it, as you said, that's a form of, of, of technology, you know, so it becomes adulterated in that sense. Um, and, and anytime you do that, you're going to leave yourself open to, to imbalance, which is very true. Yeah. yeah. And um, we were talking about, and we have to get into that discussion once we set up a regular time, but we were talking about sovereignty recently. And I was thinking about that, um, and I'm not going to go off into that, but I'm going to just relate it to as I was sitting down and thinking, thinking about that. I was sitting out fair reach and thinking about that concept um, or that reality, not even concept, that really the physical body is a cage. The physical body is a prison. Okay? Hmm. The physical body and the mind are both prisons. The prisons for the spirit. So when we have our mothers and fathers and they come together and as you said, technology has shown us that the two germs, the, the sperm and the egg come together and that is when they start to make the blastocyst. In other words, the cell starts to divide from the initial joining of two to become one, and then it starts to, to divide into the um, two, then the four, then the eight, okay? And then obviously after that, the cell starts to divide. That's the, that's the making of the jail, of the prison. The, oh. the one, then the two, then obviously, you know, the four, the eight, that's the making of the prison. And in that prison, you have the body and the mind. And the spirit is trapped for the lifetime in that prison. You cannot escape it. There's no escape, okay, no matter how hard you try. You can try to transcend, but you cannot escape because that's what life is, okay? So when it comes to sovereignty, 
That is your sovereignty that no one can take away from you. Okay? They can take that physical body, but they cannot take the spirit that was imprisoned in them. No one has access to that but yourself. Okay? And that's your what what we were, what I was calling your divine sovereignty, because that spirit has doesn't come from anywhere and doesn't go anywhere. In other words, it's it comes from whence it came. It's gonna go from where it came. It has no beginning, no end. It only gets put into that little vessel for whatever time frame that that you have. So when we allow ourselves, the more we allow ourselves to go into the external world beyond the body, because you're not the body, you're not the mind, one of my, my gurus says. You're not your body, you're not even your mind. You're not even your consciousness. Okay, all those things are trapped within the body because as soon as you lose your life, your consciousness is gone too. Okay, so that's not really us because if that was us, everyone would all be the same. If the body and the consciousness were interrelated with the spirit, everybody's external expression would be the same. My point in all of this is that one of the dangers of technology is that it takes you further and further away from the spirit, okay? And this is why for children in particular, if we expose them to that process for too long, because technology depends on you, plugs you in, then it's going to dis make that disconnect. So I'll leave it at I'll leave it at that because that's a much um, a greater uh, discussion. You yeah, know? that's 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 a broad topic. Like I said, we're we're just we're just um, touching areas, and and we'll proceed um, throughout the weeks because we're we're intending to be running live nine a.m. Um, on a daily basis, Monday to Friday, and we'll see how that goes and how the reception is. And we'll we'll dabble in topics and come back and and pick them up and go back to them as we explore them in depth. And the intention is is not episode by episode, but over periods of time to have solutions developed, to be able to inform our people so that they can be making conscientious decisions or, or um, informed decisions. And and hopefully we, we still reach a consensus. It does, I, the process shouldn't be just from us to them and now they think like us. No, no, that's definitely not the, the, the objective also. We want to give them a, a, a process on how you can go about questioning some of these um, habits that we have now, um, some of these structures that we've built, these edifices that we've built up that have um, so much uh, uh, momentum about them, so much um, authority about them that we're not willing to question them. We want to break that down a bit and get back to the process of questioning these processes on an individual basis. You, you touched on some topics there, so we can dabble a little bit. Let's go a little bit into the, the, the idea. You're talking about um, critical analysis. Critical analysis, critical thinking, being able to question yeah. things and break it down to the, the, the important issues, do research, right? Explore it and come to some conclusions that you're going to evaluate through some solution the the idea mm -hmm. is not here just to say oh that was a good talk no we want to get okay we got the issues that we need to to challenge now let's go about challenging and and and, and a big piece of it telegram is gonna uh, what i'm envisioning is gonna play a significant role that's where a lot of the work's gonna take place while we're not online that's the offline portion where we're, we're out in the world um doing the work of of challenging or putting to use this this knowledge or discovering knowledge that we want to explore further. So a lot of work is going to take place there, and I'm hoping the community will come together and um, this collective, and and we'll be building together, challenging each other, and 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 pushing the limits of what we consider um, knowledge. 
So in that, you, you, you touched on a concept real quickly that um, I want to bring up again real quickly of, of sovereignty. And what does that mean? So I'm going to bring some substance to that. We'll explore it further. This is just one resource. Um, this is taken from, this is what's considered your un, unalienable rights. That's going too big. Did I make that too big? No. Nope. I want you to see the whole page there. Your unalienable rights, which in, in, in a lot of um, contexts are considered your natural rights, right? And these things are the role of having an awareness of these um, rights um, is, is critical moving forward and us agreeing and coming to a consensus on each and every point on here. We'll explore each point over time We'll look at each of them, but we'll go over some of the fundamental ones and some of the uh, today, just as an introduction. We'll look at that that first one there, the right to life, freedom, health, and pursuit of happiness, um, as an inalienable right or unalienable right. Unalienable meaning you see. Uh, um, ah, let me do, do a quick introduction really quickly about etymology and being able to break down words. So a key skill set that you develop in decipher and when you tune in and you're part of it you're going to develop this skill set of being able to break down words to see the 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 underlying root behind these words right we to 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 see what they were intended to mean historically and what they mean now right and give context to this a lot of these terminologies that we throw around freely so let's let's get into um in, in this example, unalienable. What does it mean to be unalienable, right? And what are rights? What is a right? So let's let's break that component down, and then we we'll go to one or two of these these um, points on here. So unalienable rights are You take the 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 root of this word is alien, right? Alien refers to something that's outside of you, that's that's foreign, foreign, right? Or if it's outside of you, it's taken away from you in a sense. And that's the kind of the sense of it we want to get. Um, in this, we want to use that sense of the word that alien means outside of you or taken away from you, right? So unalienable, un means none um, or, or unable. You're not unable to alienate that. You're unable to make it foreign. You're unable to take it away from you. Unalienable. And now, so unalienable rights. What, what are these rights? Rights, the, the use of the term right has um, throughout history, and we can explore this further. I don't know if you have a, a bit of a background behind it. Why we use the term rights um, as opposed to lefts. Why don't we say unalienable lefts? <laughs> Is it the contrast between right and left? Is it the contrast between right as, uh, and we know it, it's not, right? It is it the contrast with right as in correct, right? Is it unalienable correctness? No, that's not the sense of the word we want either, right? Rights in this sense is referring to what is um, abilities that you have that allow you to move rightly, to move in 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 your proper um, role, to live your best life, right? To live your full life, to live your 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 the life you were destined to live. That's the impression I get from this word. The root of this word is more the not so much that it's correct, but proper, in that it 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 allows you when you understand them, it allows you to live the life that you're supposed to live. So let's look at that first accent there. It says unalienable rights are inherent sovereign, as you referred to before, right? Sovereign meaning they are, um, and, and that 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 sovereign also has a, a link there to the the word right, and we'll get into that as we we explore. Um, but that reign, the idea that reigning meaning you are in control. So sovereign refers to who is in control of, 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 of whatever entity it is, who is reigning over, sovereign, reigning over, right? You should be reigning over yourself in this sense. Nat and then as we continue, natural rights that existed before the creation of the state. 
We'll explore what this state is and the role that the state's supposed to play in our life. We've got a chat uh, or, or discussion group or reasoning. That's that's another issue I want I want to bring up. Deciphers about having reasonings. We're bringing back that old tradition, using this online format to sit around the table and have a reasoning where no one is necessarily the leader. I'm the host, but there's definitely no leadership in the sense that you're listening to me because I've got some authority. No, you're listening to me because I'm, I'm created this platform but um, and you're tuned in, but because you have... Um, joined me in this process and you're part of the reasoning anyway as we continue so the state and the role of the state and the creation and history of the state right now as we continue and which being antecedent which means before or or um you know the root of anti is means the root sedent means what it's in place so what was in place before antecedent being antecedent to the ab above state we're referring to that state can never be taken away. So let's read that um, through smoothly as we've defined some of the terms in there. It was a little interrupted. It didn't flow. Unalienable rights are the inherent sovereign natural rights that existed before the creation of the state. That existed before the creation of the state. So we had rights before some government came and said, these are your, your constitutional rights. Before that, we had rights. Okay? And we'll go in and establish that what was the authority that those rights come from? And which being antecedent to and above the state. So they came before and uh, reign above. They are um, a higher form of law than states. And you have to subject yourself to law of the states. And you have to, um, the term is, is if you can help me there, I'm looking for the word. You have to succeed not succeed um when you allow yeah, success, right secession secede secession. yeah secede. yes yes <laughs> yes secession you have to allow the, the the state you do you have to voluntarily give up these rights to allow the state's rights to to to, to stand over them we're not aware of this and we're going to bring this to our, our the awareness of our viewers and the the community right um now, as we continue i, I yeah, want to jump in because i'm going yes, to yes. um We've been on for an hour and a half almost, so I'm going to uh -huh. give you about 15 more minutes. But yes, sir. let me pose this to you, okay? And this is what I'm trying to, to explain or to make more awareness of when I'm having the discussions and reasons in our cipher uh, on, on Telegram. Yes. There is no such thing as your unalienable rights okay. except in the framework of the communal society that you live in. Like I explained before, within the bees, the termites, the ants, okay? It's the same thing. Within that society, there are some unalienable rights that each one of those uh, individuals will have based off of their, their perceived role, right? Mm -hmm. So the queen, she has a certain role and, and everyone respects that. And the drones and the worker bees and so on and so on. Okay, fine. Now, in our society, There was never a time, if you think and try to uh, play a thought exercise and go reverse to a time when the state did not exist. Okay, now here it is. So yeah, repeat as that again. You can, can you can you repeat okay. that clear, clearly? If you do a thought exercise and you go back to a time when a state did not exist, you would have to go to a primordial man who is operating as a, a living organism in nature, right? Yes. Because 
humans have always been what's what what's um, communal organ organisms. So that state, which now is in a larger sense, governments and so on, always existed as a family structure, right? Yes. Okay. But in nature, let's say you went as far back as you can, okay? Because you said that that person has put this idea together that is your unalienable right to life, liberty, happiness. If you and your family went swimming in the river to get to the other side, to go pick those mangoes, a crocodile could come and snatch you. He does not respect your unalienable right to life, liberty, happiness, employment, none of that. There's only one way that life operates within this frame that we call the earth, and that's through power. To think that that there is some sort of um, unalienable rights in your physical body or your physical manifestation that others have to respect is to be naive and has never existed before in time. The only unalienable right that we have is, as I said, to where you have true sovereignty. That's the only place it exists. Otherwise than that. So where does true sovereignty exist? It only exists within the world that you were given. There's nothing else that you're sovereign over. Everything else is taken by force. If I buy this land, I'm not sovereign over. I'm just bought the land from somebody who's agreed to respect and so on and so on. You know, if I want to go pick that loquat and I say that's my my loquat tree or whatever, then someone else has to agree on that, or someone could come by, come come, someone could come by and say that's not your that's not your loquat tree. You cannot pick it. Every inch, every step, every foot of ground for every organism is taken by either force or agreement. So if a bird comes and flies in your yard, he doesn't know that that's your yard. If you wanted to, to kill that bird, you could, but you've given agreement that he can operate within your yard. So the only place, let me just finish this. No, All continue. this other stuff is an illusion. I'm not saying it's not useful because humans have to operate within this context of human relationships. But I'm saying that all of the, the energy we put towards uh, the illusion of the physical world pales in comparison to the divine sovereignty that every living organism has. That is where you connect to your creator or to the creator. And when I say connect, I don't mean pick up the phone. I mean that that is where the connection already exists. It can never be taken away. It was there from before and it will be there from, from after. So I know it's a lofty concept, but- Can you state it again? That state that again, state that again and, and concisely. Your summary? What about the connection? Yeah. That as, as a living entity on this earth, okay, or in creation, because you don't have to be on this earth, but in creation, that you have no unali unalienable rights. You may want to have that, but you don't have that. The only way to enforce your rights, because the word right, and I looked it up, the etymology, just because you were saying, where does it come from? And that was a good question. It orientates from the word straight. Yeah. Right is to do with straight, a straight line. Okay. Going forward. Going forward. 
forward, straight. There you go. Newton's laws of motion. Right? Newton wrecked. says. Yes, yes, wrecked, wrecked. It, it, right and wrecked. 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 Re yes, yes, yes. Right. Exactly. Continue. Newton says that a body that is at rest or in constant motion will remain at rest or in constant motion unless it's disturbed by another interaction, another force or body, right? Yes. That's the exact point, that you have a right, meaning you going straight, <laughs> but somebody could come along and take you out of your motion if they are stronger than you. If you're stronger than them, they will bounce right off. But it's not an unalienable right. And our people need to really understand that concept. And because from the beginning of time, as we know that anecdotal story about, you know, about African people, I'm using that loosely in quotes, were very open, you know, Sure, you need something to eat. Come on, come. You could pick off the tree. You could do this. It's, it's no problem. We like to invite people in. We like to help people in. And then lo and behold, before you know it, that person's taking over the whole tree. And like, boy, that used to be our tree. <laughs> you know. So I'm not in favor of that. So I'm and and more so, the more so, the bigger point to this because I was having a, uh, another reason with some, some brethren and they were going up into the whole religious stuff and, you know, um, what's the end game for, for uh, COVID-19 and the new world order and all of this stuff, right? And I was saying to them that all of that, while it is important, ultimately, it's just a distraction from your true self. None of it really matters. Because if I put you, alchemist, in a prison, I open a box, I dug into the ground six feet, and I put someone in that box, into that ground six feet, no food, no water, okay? Enough air for them to, to survive for a while, but they knew it was a limited time. That person, still has sovereign right over their self. All, the, all that you've done is trap their mind. You could put the, that is the higher reasoning of, 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 of Yeshua being on the cross, nailed up, physically in prison. You know, he can't do anything. But his sovereignty, his connection with the Almighty was not dependent on that within the myth mythology. So the idea of sovereignty, we like to think this is where they've tricked us. The queen is sovereign, the regent is a, is a sovereign over um, you know, the commonwealth and so on and so on. They're not talking, they're, not, they're actually not talking about the person. What we like to think is about the person is not is not about the present, hence why Queen Elizabeth, the person, is not the region. The region is separate and beyond. The regency never leaves. Okay, and the I'm, 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 I'm going to stop. But yeah, yeah, let's jump in there. Let, let's, let's, let's look at some of the, the terms. The regency is tied to the crown. It's tied to the crown. It's not to do with the person itself. Right, the, the, and I'm just saying that the ideas of sovereignty that we think about are very, very shallow. And that two lessons I just want to say: the first, the lesson is the ideas of sovereignty that we think about are very shallow. And number two, in the physical world, because that is important, isn't it? We have to feed ourselves and so on. Sovereignty. It is all about power. You can't get away from it. Buck Boros and 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 uh, um, Larry Tacklin, 
they had an idea of some of this and they were willing to to put their lives on the line i guess for that if we can believe the story because there's a lot of other aspects of the story that are not clear okay but unless as you said in that you are willing to enforce your inalienable rights <laughs> If I want to go into town and I say, you know what, I'm not wearing my mask to go into this building. And you just walk in and, the, and someone says to you, no, you should wear your mask. You're like, no, I'm a sovereign individual. I have unalienable rights to life, liberty and happiness. And wearing this mask does not make me happy. And they say, you know what, okay, we're going to call the police because it's our regulation. I need to be able to say to myself, how far am I willing to go to enforce my individual sovereignty? And for most of us, because we have other things keeping us, you know, there's only so far that we will go. Okay. Let, let, let's do two things. First, um, you said you only got 10 minutes. You're going to be 10, 15 minutes. Then you jumped in. Then you jumped into a heavy run. You said, yeah, I'm going to go in. I'm going to go in heavy. So, um, so th this is going to be difficult to, 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 to kind of address all of those points you, you brought up. So let's, go on, hmm? let's go until, how long do you want to go until 11? Okay, I, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm, re I, I'm really, this is about grabbing some footage now. This is turned into grabbing some footage. Um, and get some some nice let's access. Put a time limit on it. So let's go on to eleven. Eleven is is cut off. Eleven is cut off. There's yeah. And which which is the general? That's nine till eleven is the general time. But you know this is fresh TV, so we got we control the time here. Is 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 until Elmore comes in and tells me he's, he's ready to go. We got free time here. We don't pay. We're not paying them for for the time. This is, is this is uh fresh TV's uh 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 time broadcast space so with that we got to the 11 or further but with you i definitely want to engage in this concept because we, we, we've been in the background anybody that's not been privy to the conversations been taking place over the last two to three days heavily in the background concerning um this idea of sovereignty that's what that's the, the the one um reasoning that's been going really really strong so there's a lot of um, build up to this this particular point of this particular segment of the cipher. Um, so tune in. I, I just want to advocate firstly, if you want to be a part of that process and be privy to all of that, tune in. Go to decipher.com. Join in on the Telegram groups. You could pick one of the different groups. They're not posted yet. They will be there in, in, uh, momentarily. I'm just setting it up. But you'll be able to click on invitation. Right now, you can just click on the Telegram invitation in general. But it'll be laid out so you can join each of these conversations and be part and privy to all of the background that's taking place here. We're just going to bring out the salient points on, on um, you know, TV and bring it out broadcast it to, to, to the people so that they can get a, uh, 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 they can embrace it. How did he do that? I put that up. All right. So that in mind, let's let's jump right into that that one point about unalienable rights. I'll address. I'll, let's address that that component of it specifically that we don't have unalien unalienable rights don't exist let, 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 let's let's weigh that out and see where, where what consensus we can come come to so what i propose is that they exist and they existed before the state we can try to establish what the state is and when it came into existence um and and when when did the state becomes something that was imposed on us. We can take that avenue, but I'm not going to take that's going to take further research. And, um, you know, we don't have the time at, 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 at this juncture to, to, to adjust that piece. It's a big piece. We'll get to that. Well, the, the fact that what unalienable rights means in general means that we're dealing with human interactions, which is based on the ability to reason. What, 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 what we're keying on, in on is the fact that this these are uh, human um, laws. These are human laws. This natural law is human laws because they're they're written in words. It is it's it's not written in in barks or or you know what I mean? or, or you know what I mean some 
another animal language. This is human language, in this case, English, um, specifically. Uh, but, you know, the, whatever language, whatever human language, but it's reasoning. You have to have the reasoning skill to even be able to appreciate this. So it, it wouldn't uh, um, uh, uh, it wouldn't apply to our interaction with animals. It wouldn't apply to, to someone Listen, that was the law. Mark. Law is Maybe only yeah. achieved by two ways. Divine proclamation meaning when I say divine, I'm talking about, um, sorry, not divine, royal proclamation, okay, or consensus. That's the only two ways that law is achieved. If you live in a non-feudal society, it's through consensus. So that consensus in terms of inalienable rights is subjective to the human relationships established on law so there's there's no there's nothing written down except for what we accept in modern societies when i say modern societies we can go back to ancient egypt we can go back to the phoenicians the babylonians that's all, well, in, the, in this sense, modern, rather than primordial man, natural man who is living in a society governed by his base, basic needs, okay? As soon as man, human, established something beyond that, then he went into a more organized uh, way of, of, of living that had to be negotiated either through some sort of agreement or through power, one or the other. In other words, if there is a mango tree and I'm living with my tribe, my, my, my woman and my children, Okay, that's my tribe. I saw a woman, she liked me, I liked her. We had children together, we're raising a family together in the bush. A thought exercise, I'm taking you back. Okay, that's the basis of human society. And that's a mango tree that I know every summer bears fruit. And I make a path from my winter ground where there's another type of tree to that tree, a path has now been created, going, me going back and forth. I've established a routine behavior, okay? And somebody comes along and blocks that path because they want to feed their family now. Immediately, unless we have an agreement, or I'm willing to move that individual, then that's the only way I'm going to feed my family. So in terms of this thing about things written down and so on and so on, I'm not sure about that one. Because well, what's written in, down? Let, let's get into it. Let's get into it. The, the, so the, the issue is write, write, writing it down. Um, it, that's a razor now. So can I, I pose two questions? Can we achieve a can, consensus without the state? Can consensus can we organize ourselves? And have we? Do we have evidence that we have been organized before there was such a thing as the state? I put that to you. If you look at some of the earliest laws and consensus things, let's look at Mart. Okay, Mart as a set of guidelines that people tended to agree on within ancient Kemet. The state was already heavily involved. So I don't think there is any, um, and even before written, you might have had, had oral, like sort of oral practices and so on and so on. So the other little quick piece is that 
Um, it's all about human relationships. That's what the, that's what law is built on, human relationships. And as we know, many people within the world will treat humans as subhuman. Okay, so you might see one individual as human, but you see someone else as subhuman. How do we know that? Because you're treating that human in the same way that you might treat another species. You're not treating them like you treat other humans. So, like I said, it's all very subjective. And we, we rely on our, on our leaders and all that to create that consensus. But it is a very, very fickle reliance. Well, I would say tenable and, and, and uh, or tentative. That it's always, we, we're always uh, managing this, these rights. They're not, they're not written on a scroll somewhere that everybody can refer to and just say that these are on, on our unalienable rights. I they tried put, in the states, in the constitution, yeah, they this, tried that. That's the state. That's the state. So I, the, I'm, I'm extending off of the, 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 the um, premise that um, we can achieve a consensus without the state. So um, I, I, I posed it to you. Now I'm, I'm, I'm continuing as if, can is it possible? And I, I propose that it is possible that we can achieve consensus without the state and that it's an example of how our relations, our human relations existed before um, Western society, um, that we had an oral history that was and an oral system that was far more that that was and, and this ties us all in so this is a nice way to conclude things and bring it together bring today's reasoning to a nice um level terms is the tie between generations the tie between uh the um uh, um uh ancestors the tie between our to be ancestors our elders and our youth connecting that together so that they're talking the same language so that the work there was an oral tradition there there was an oral they, they shared by you sat down at the feet of the elders and learned the values of of your society right the elders had the time while your, your parents were probably out working the fields or you know what i mean harvesting or whatever you know however the society agronomically was set up you know what i mean in terms of of, of its economy and it's it's a bit of a bit the availability of resources, you know, how they procure the resources. Most times you had that middle generation that was out working. So you had the elders and the youth sitting down together, working together. And there was this transfer of knowledge orally that predominated the scenario. And I put forward that there's a, there, there is, there existed a framework within that oral tradition that was a continual process of understanding your unalienable rights. This is what I'm putting forward. I, I put forward that it exists and that you had to defend, you had to learn to defend them. You had to learn to understand them, to, 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 to know where they come from and the root of them and defend them yourself. You had to, see, uh, 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 you're supposed to proclaim your rights. Now we're going to roots of the word proclaim, which means to, to pro mean forward and claim to, to take hold of it. Proclaim, you had to state it right the the um de a declaration is something you declare and you are supposed to, as an individual declare it and say these are my rights as you walk into a space you say these are my rights and i'm going to defend them i'm going to stand here and enforce my power to defend my rights based on survival based on oh, yes the, the the idea of how you were to survive best so you have those rights because you have a right to live, okay? You have a right to live that you are proclaiming as yourself. But as you said, unless you're willing to, to defend those rights, okay, and all of the subtleties of it, then someone else can subject their rights, subject their rights over yours. Okay. You hit it. That that's it. That that's um, the scenario. I was just gonna say, 
the old tradition seems very far off, but actually there's there's examples. So, mm -hmm. for example, the elders would say, don't break the branches of the loquat tree when you're picking it. Yes. Right? That's like an old, old law that's been passed down for most Bermudians. We don't know that. Okay, But it's not written down in law. You can't go to magistrate's court and the guy says, oh, you broke the, you know, that's how yeah. things are, are passed down. So, um, however, unless, again, we are willing, as you said, to proclaim it and to defend it, then then it's not it's, it's, someone it's else will subject you. Yeah, yeah. It's someone else will subject every, you. Every living thing is what I'm trying to show you. Okay. Also has that right because they want to survive. That's where the connection was to, to, to nature. You go out, you said your family are fishermen, so on and so on. They hooked that fish. That fish was just trying to get something to eat. But your family has said, you know what? I'm taking you because it's my right to survive. And my right, in this case, is going to trump your right. And that's why they say that humans have dominion over the earth, because we're able to subject the rights of all these love other living organisms, which is why we need to remain moral and conscious. And uh, you, uh, you, 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 you touched on another piece there, because they don't have the reasoning skills, and all these other organisms, right? The, the skills or ability or 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 capacity or or you know what I mean, um, and that's debatable, um, you know what I mean, because they're they're realms or dimensions we, we can speak of um time being one of them um maybe that these organisms are speaking to us it's just in a in a a, a frame <laughs> another pulling from another term we, we we introduced earlier a frame rate that we can we're not used to accept it maybe it's too fast um i don't know if you've seen those the cartoons with the the uh what was it bugs life a bugs life where the bugs are talking and then when the humans came in everything was yeah, yeah, slow. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 uh, that was that was some phenomenal um imagery it, it really keyed in it was it was almost a spiritual thing to me the movie became spiritual to me it became this message yeah. that, that these these organisms are probably out there having a ball of a time talking about us you know what i mean <laughs> look at this this feel hurt you know what i mean trying to climb yeah, the shit. Movie. Uh -huh. That movie, for all the juvenile aspects of it, was all about sovereignty. Yeah, it was all about sovereignty. Key okay, piece. No, look. What, what, B what, what, movie I'm talking yeah. about. I'm actually talking about the B movie. The B movie. Yeah, the B one. The B one. The B one was all about sovereignty. But look, we're, we're, we're at 1058. Right. We can keep it. We're going to stay disciplined. We're, we're not going to enter in another because I can see you're ready to go again. You, you, you were no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm looking at the time. Okay, okay. So we're wrapped. Well, this has been an interesting um, introduction. We got into some, we delved into who each other. I think I've learned a lot more about who Dr. David Roots is. Um, and as we explore, I'm introduced to a few of the terms that I, I intend to explore a bit further. I wanted to go a bit and, and do an introduction of some of the other topics, but we dealt with some of the core concepts um, that uh, are the framework behind the cipher. So um, thank you for, for, for being a part of this, this first episode. Hopefully you'll be on board of the panel going on and we'll have other um, spiritually connected intellectuals. That, that's the type of energy we want. People that are connecting spirituality and um, research in a way that they have a, a, a core that and a foundation that they stand on that they have principles that they stand on that's the type of people we want to welcome into this panel and into this conversation so that we can be progressive and we can achieve a consensus at the end so i think at this stage what we've done is is is, is set the, the table set the framework we'll, we'll put all the the the, the 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 chess tables all set up every all the man on the on the board um per se uh because we 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 we, we want I, I want a panel of at least four I'm, I'm aiming for four to six uh minds in this space on a daily basis to be able to to delve deep and break these these and offer different perspectives and it's in the comparison of the perspectives that i think the the illumination is going to occur the the elevation is going to occur 
and then put it to practice and challenge some of these concepts um, there on, on, on Telegram. So tune in um, 9 a.m. On, on Fresh TV um, weekdays for Decipher. We'll be continuing on when Elmore gets back with the live uh, Fresh in the Morning show. This will be following it. Um, it should be available on um, decipher.com. Um, you can click the links and tune in there. You can also tune in to um, Dr. Roots has his own programs and his own um, YouTube channel um, where you can see some of his lectures and things. And um, other ways they think people can contact you. Do you have any other that you... Uh, well, they can link me, on, link me on Facebook, uh, Living Roots. Uh, that's my, my, the name I go by on Facebook. And just tune in on, on YouTube. Um, you can find some of my resources on Amazon.com. Of course, some of my books for children and uh, for parents, books on wealth. Those are the main ways. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. I appreciate the, the, the jumping in and, and making this interesting. All right. So yeah, I'll talk to you offline. Thank you. Yes, talk to you offline. So that's that brings to a conclusion this first um, step out here uh, in in this this uh, new 2021 version of the uh, Decipher show and Fresh TV. We hope you tune in. Be here 9 a.m. mornings. We're going to build it up and get some momentum going and try to break down some of these barriers, some of these um Issues that are standing in front of us and preventing us from unifying, preventing us from working together collectively and progressing. We're going to shift into progressive state, active state. We're not just going to be receiving other people's programming. Tune in to Fresh TV for more. And as we tune out, I'm going to leave you with a little message. Thank you uh, for tuning in and see you next week. I'm mean, see you tomorrow. <laughs>